Okay, so today's topic is linkage. Couple things that you need to know. We said linked traits occur or linked genes occur on the same chromosome. So if we were to talk about a chromosome, the traits that we were dealing with would be maybe this is seed shape and this is maybe plant color. They are on the same chromosome. So that's the key in linkage, is you're dealing with genes that are on that same chromosome. And what Thomas Morgan was really interested in was how far apart are they, and could we predict how often crossover would happen by how close they are together or how far apart they are. So in linkage problems, there are three possible outcomes. Every question has to be one of these three types. This is the very quick overview of linkage. If you'd like more of the background with Thomas Morgan, how crossover works specifically, let me know and I can go through that information with you. So this is the quick overview. So every time you look at a linkage question, you are going to check to see if it meets one of these three options. So if you look at a linkage question and you have two types of offspring and they are exactly the same, that means complete linkage. You say these genes are completely linked and you are done the question and you move on. So it'll say in the question, it'll tell you what the parents are. If the offspring look exactly like the parents and there's only two types of offspring, it's complete linkage. So that's one possibility. The second possibility is when you look at the offspring, there are four different types. And when you look specifically at the numbers that go with those four different types, they are very close to a one to one to one to one ratio. And I'm going to show you how to calculate percentage of recombination. When you calculate it, it is 50% or higher. And that means independent assortment. Independent assortment is what would happen normally with any of the traits that Gregor Mendel talked about. It means that the genes that you were dealing with were on separate chromosomes, so it doesn't matter how those chromosomes move, those genes move with that chromosome. If they were linked, they would move together. The other way to take the independent assortment is either they're so far apart that crossover happens all the time, or they're actually on separate chromosomes. And to determine that, you'd have to go into more detail, but this is the answer that you would give there. The third option is there are four types of, of offspring, but when you look at the numbers, you might get 92 to 95 to 15 to 20. So it's definitely not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's fairly lopsided. And if you calculated the percentage of recombination, that would be 49% or lower, and that equals incomplete linkage. What it means is that crossover is happening, so it's creating that variety, but maybe it's not happening all the time. So at the bottom of the page is a practice question for us to take a look at with the steps that we need to go through. So same process, we always start by reading and looking for what's dominant, what's recessive, what are the parents, and in particular, we're interested in what the parents are. So in a, cer a certain plant is tall, and has red flowers. So there's one parent. Another plant of the same species is short and has white flowers. So tall red is one type, short white is the other. It says two pure breeding lines were crossed. Pure breeding refers to homozygous. Were crossed and all produced plants with red flowers. A test cross means you take that unknown genotype and you cross it with homozygous recessive, and these are the results that you got. So the steps to complete these questions. Underline the parents, so I've circled one set of parents and I underlined the other. Then we need to look at the offspring, and we need to ask ourselves, is there two different types or four different types? So here we have four types. If we have four types, that means this option is gone. We're looking for a one to one to one ratio or a lopsided ratio. 78 to 80 to 65 to 76. 
Is that closer to a one-to-one -one or a lopsided? Okay, so maybe we're not completely sure because it's not exactly one-to-one-to-one-to-one. -to -one -to -one -to -one. So what you would do is calculate the percentage of recombination. Here's what you need to know about recombinants. When you read the question, tall red is one type of parent. The types of offspring that look like the parents are referred to as parental types. So if you look here, is tall red like one of the parents? So I would label this with a P for parental. So it looks just like the parent. A recombinant is a combination of each parent. So it would be tall white or red short. Now, is short white a parent? We said short white is here, so this is another parent type. Is tall white like a parent? But it does have one trait from each, right? So this is a recombinant. And short red, parent or recombinant? Recombinant. A recombinant means it's not like either parent, it has one from each. So this one has short from here and red from here. The numbers that we are most interested in are these. Now, to calculate the percentages that will confirm the type of linkage that we have happening or not happening, we need to take the recombinants. So the formula will be recombinants divided by the total times by 100 will give us the percent that tells us what we need to know. So, in this case, what are the two things I need to add together? Correct. So I add 65 plus the 76. What I'd like you to do right now is calculate the total. So add your recombinants, calculate the total, and then times it by 100 and put down what you have. And we'll just pause for a moment and then we'll come back in about 60 seconds and check where we're at. Okay, let's do a quick check and make sure that my numbers match. So the recombinants that I took, 65 and 76, that's what I wrote down here. The total would be 78 plus 80 plus 65 plus 76. I ended up with 299. Does that match? Oh, yeah. Then I divided 141 by 299 and I ended up with 47.16%. Correct? I would go to two decimal places. We don't need to get any more specific than that. Now, you are partially done the question. What you calculated here is called the percent of recombination. So we calculated the percentage of recombination. I'm going to slide this down for a moment. We knew it had four types of offspring, and you were predicting independent assortment or incomplete linkage. If it's 50% or higher, it's independent assortment. If it's 49 or lower, it's incomplete linkage. So which one is it? Right, so in this case, 47 is less than 49. So this is incomplete linkage. How many of you got that correct? Good. So what incomplete linkage means is we found two traits that are on the same chromosome, but sometimes when crossover happens, this gene gets switched over to this side and we get the different types of ratios that are happening. So it's incompletely linked because occasionally crossover does that. Now, if you can just take a look here for one moment. Genes that are completely linked tend to be very close together. It's so rare that it would break in between those two and crossover. They always travel together. Incomplete linkage tends to be ones that are further away. And essentially, the percentage of recombination can be used to show in a diagram how far apart they would be. And Thomas Morgan talked about centimorgans, 
or MAP units, which is essentially the percentage of recombination. So it would say these are about 47 MAP units apart. Because they're fairly far apart, linkage or crossover does happen. So that's why we get those numbers. Question? Or this? Yes. So it was what was referenced up here when it says percentage of recombination. Easier than the other ones? Okay, let's try a couple more questions and then you can practice. How many of you could look at this question and tell me what it is already? It's complete linkage. How did we know? There's only two types of offspring. Now, always read the question just to make sure. So it says, a certain plant has yellow flowers and tall vines. So there's my one parent crossed with another plant of the same species that has red flowers and short vines. Two pure breeding lines were crossed and all produced yellow flowers on tall vines. A test cross produced 130 plants. Yellow, tall, that's exactly like this parent. Red, short, exactly like that parent. When you go back to this page, it says if you have two types of offspring, it's complete linkage. They look exactly like the parents. So the question, explain the results. Is linkage involved? Yes. Oh, sorry. Wrong page. So are the two genes linked? Yes. Complete linkage. Done. There's nothing for you to calculate in this question. Let's try number three together, and then the other ones I'll leave open for you to go through and try. And then the rest of the time will be body system research, and you can try a couple of these. So, step one, I need to read, a pure breeding mink with black fur and a white tipped tail was crossed with a pure breeding brown furred mink without a white tip. The offspring were all black with a white tip on their tail, the test cross uh, numerous matings produce the following. I need to decide, because there are one, two, three, four, which are the parental types, which are the recombinants. Black with a white tip. Parent or recombinant? Okay, so this is a parent, and I know black, white-tipped. Black with no white tip. Correct, that is a recombinant. It has one from each. Brown, no white tip. Brown without a white tip, parent, brown with a white tip is a recombinant. So the numbers I am interested in are 32 and 29. What am I going to write here? 32 plus 29 divided by the total. So try that. So let's check your answer. We took the recombinants, added them together. We had 61. Does that match? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yeah. 118 in total? 61 divided by 118 times 100. I had 51.69. Does that match? So then I go back to my chart. This is only part of the answer to the question. You go back to the chart. I knew it had four types. 51 is greater than 50, so it means independent assortment is happening. So this is, this one, these ones you will have to know. Now, let's answer the question here. Does it, are the two genes linked? Considered linked if it's independent assortment. We can't tell right now, right? They're either on two separate chromosomes, which accounts for that number, or they are so far apart that crossover is always happening there, so it's like they're on separate chromosomes. 
So technically, geneticists would consider this a no. They are not linked. They are essentially on separate chromosomes and they're behaving like that. Your percentage of crossover, a percentage of recombination is 51.69. Now, I would suggest you have a pretty good idea of where you're at for solving these. I would try at least one more or two more just to confirm. You can choose to do that now. We can choose to come back to this next week and continue reviewing. Uh, for right now, you can continue on with your body system research project. So uh, we've got 20 minutes to go with that. So you can do another 20 minutes of research there. If you want to do the research on your own time and you'd like to work with me on genetics problems, then let me know and we can meet at the front table and we'll just go through and work on genetics problems. Just let me pause this. Yes.